Anything that controls the way we feel and the way we think, we're victims to that circumstance. In other words, we're victims to our environment, and our response to the environment actually weakens the organism. It actually takes the body's vital life force and turns it into emergency, and that's and you tap those resources. Okay, so then that's cause and effect. You're waiting for something, you create something, and so we're in the plane of doing, and you master some skills, you get educated, you make the right choices, you get the right counseling or the right advice, and you could actually succeed in this world. Well, that's great, but the time between you getting it <laughs> and the thought of it is a lot of separation, right? And so what if, like you said, you said, okay, what would a new personality who's not competitive live like? What, 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 how would I have to think? How would a, how would a person who, who's no longer competitive have to think? And you start thinking about how to think. And the act of actually with intention or attention actually begins to install new circuitry in your brain, new hardware. Keep doing it. And it becomes like a software program. That becomes the new voice in your head mm. that says, ease up, there's another way to do it. And then if you said, how am I going to be in my life when I open my eyes? How am I going to live today, one day, one lifetime, as if I wasn't competitive? Okay, well, I may have to read a little bit and learn a little about how to do that, but I can find somebody that did that. Obviously, someone has. If you closed your eyes and you rehearsed mentally, how are you going to be on a Zoom call? How are you going to be with your colleagues? How are you going to be in your relationships? Mental rehearsal, when you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between the real life experience and what you're imagining. And the research on mental rehearsal says you can install neurological hardware in your brain to look like you've already done it. That's already been experienced. Mm -hmm. Now your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. Keep priming the brain with those instructions and the hardware will become a software program. Now you'll start behaving that way. Now here's the hard part, which you accomplished. Can I teach my body emotionally what it would feel like to no longer be competitive, to be in love with life and know that everything's gonna work out or that I'm resourceful or intelligent or whatever it is? Can I bring up the feeling of what the competitive, non-competitive person or a person who's mastered that feels like? If you can teach your body emotionally what that feels like before the experience, then it would make sense then if you could do that enough times, you can condition your body emotionally to begin to change with that thought and that feeling, with mm. that image and that emotion. And so then the person becomes a new personality <laughs> and changes from the old personality. And our research shows when you do that, not only do you change your circuitry, the way your brain works, the way your heart works, your gene expression, your immune system, but the side effect of that a lot of times is there's very profound biological changes that take place in the person's health. Mm -hmm. And you say, how did you do that? And they'll tell you, <laughs> that disease exists in the old personality. I'm literally somebody else. So if you have evidence and testimony, which we do have, that mm -hmm. it's possible to change, and we have great evidence in scientific research that we're doing, evidence becomes the loudest voice. And that person who stands on the stage and tells the story of their personal transformation, and they're speaking the truth, they're the four minute mile. And that's a new level of consciousness that says, I don't need anything outside of me to change my internal state. Yeah. I could actually self-regulate and change my internal state. And the more I understand what I'm doing based on, the, based on the model of science and why I'm doing it made simply, then the how gets easier because you assign meaning to it. And when you assign meaning to it, you switch on that prefrontal cortex and it will find value in the act. If mm. you don't know what you're doing and why you're doing it, it's left to conjecture, to superstition, to dogma. And so then lighting a match in a dark place and taking a look at what aspect of yourself, if you wanna be happy, then the first thing you have to do is stop being unhappy. You gotta become conscious of those thoughts that make you feel bad yeah. and the memories that go along with it and the emotions of that and, 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 and disentangling from that program uh, takes a lot of energy and a lot of awareness. You mentioned visualization there, really, the, this theme of creating the emotion and the feeling now. You're not waiting for 
something to happen in the future so you can experience that feeling. You, you're actually taking control of that and creating that feeling immediately, which is very powerful. And what I think of when you say that is I think about sports people. Tiger Woods, for example, the night before playing 18 holes, he'd be in bed and he would literally be playing every single hole, every shot, picturing where it's going to land, walks up, plays that shot. Is it going to be a little draw? It's going to be a little cut. Is it going to be low? Is it going to be high? To the point where he and other golfers will say, when they show up to actually play, they've already played the course. So I know a mutual friend of ours, David Hamilton, when I spoke to him on the show a couple of years ago, David spoke about tennis for him and how, you know, never really played before. And I think within a few months or within a year, he was actually doing really well in the men's leagues through this kind of process of visualization. So I think when we hear about it from sports folk, we, we get it, we go, yeah, yeah, it's important for them. But you know, many of us don't think about it with our own health. We think that the way we feel is the way we feel. Oh, you know, I, I happen to feel low and sad. The other thing that I discovered whilst I was researching uh, for this for this um, conversation, uh, Dr. Joe, was there's this wonderful TED talk by a chap called Anil Seth. He's a, a global researcher in consciousness at, at the University of Sussex. And in his TED talk, he shows this wonderful image of a human being literally there's a false hand in front of them and he's looking at that false hand and then after a few seconds someone drops a knife in on the false hand and he pulls his real hand away it's so profound and this really speaks to what you've just been saying which is your brain doesn't know the difference yeah we don't see things how they are we see things how we are and so the i, I don't like to use the word visualization because i think it's been Okay, it's been overused. I like to use the word mental rehearsal. I don't care if you're a virtuoso uh, musician. I don't care if you are a performer or an actor. <laughs> I don't care if you're a dancer or an athlete. Everybody does this who's engaged in getting better at whatever they do. They will rehearse the course. Now, or they'll re rehearse the act enough times that the, once they can concept the whole thing to its completion and they get out of that think box, then the think box is so important because we have to review our act. We have to repeat it enough times. And the act of mental rehearsal really installs the neurological hardware in your brain. It primes the brain for so you have circuits to use. Now, Mental rehearsal also changes the body. You can take a group of men uh, and have them imagine or rehearse doing bicep curls for an hour a day for two weeks and add an emotional component called stronger, harder, more intense. And for one hour, they practice in their mind doing those, those curls. At the end of two weeks, there's a 13.5 increase in muscle strength. They never lifted a weight. Their body's changing by thought alone. So the person who's priming their brain and body through rehearsal, when they get in their play box, there's no thinking. <laughs> mm. They're just doing. There's just the act. In fact, the thought of what they're doing becomes the experience. They get lost in the act and their analytical facilities, their, their analytical mind is out of the way and they can, they can sustain a state where nothing in their environment is going to move them from this state. They're in the feeling of what it would feel like to play well and they hold on to that feeling. And when the conditions get tense, they actually do something different. They self-regulate and they actually crave this moment of performance to be able to produce an outcome. And so there's no mysticism to this. It's just what people do when they get really into something is that we rehearse all the time. So but people understand if you take a group of people that never played the piano before and you teach them one-handed scales and chords and they come and practice for two hours a day for five days at the end of five days if you do a brain scan before and after they'll grow circuits on the opposite side of the brain no magic there you learn something new learning's making new connections you get your body involved you get some instruction mm -hmm. you have an experience experience enriches the circuits repeat it over and over again fire and wire and pay attention and stay present you'll assemble new neural neurological uh, circuitry. 
take another group of people, have them close their eyes and act, actually have them mentally rehearse playing the scales and chords for two hours a day for five days, scan their brain before and after. And at the end of five days, their brain will look like they've been playing the piano for five days, but they never lifted a finger. The brain mm. literally changed through the rehearsal. Okay. So now take the person and put them in front of a piano that never played the piano before. And they could actually play those scales and chords like the people who are actually physically demonstrating it. So what does that have to do for the single mother of three children? What does that have to do with the person who's trying to heal a health condition? It's not enough to just have a good meditation and get up and spend the rest of your day reacting and responding to the conditions in your life. That's one hour of living or conditioning your body and brain into the future against 15 hours of you responding emotionally from your mm. past. So we got to rehearse, okay, how am I going to be in this situation? How am I going to change? What would love do today? Well, how, what would greatness look like? It's, the, it's those frontal lobe questions that actually begins to install the circuitry and we all do it naturally. The only time we don't do it is when we're living in stress and we're living in survival. Why? Because it's not a time to create. It's not a time to learn. It's not a time to go inward. Uh, it's not, and not a time to dream. It's yeah. a time to run, fight and hide. And if you're spending the majority of your time in the arousal of those stress hormones, then most people then their senses become heightened, they narrow their focus, and now they're engaged in, in doing anything they can, relying on something outside of them to take away that feeling. So if, a pe if people begin to understand that they actually can change, and there's a f they understand a formula to do it, and they practice that formula, and they rehearse it, both by mentally rehearsing it and actually participating in it, the effects should be in the experiment that something should change either in your body or in your life. And that's why we do it. So when you see the changes or the synchronicities or the coincidences or the opportunities starting to show up in your life, you're going to pay attention to what you did and you're going to do it again. And many people who have chronic health conditions that just get beyond those thoughts and those habits and those emotions that keep them as that same personality and begin to think, act, and feel differently, notice dramatic changes in their, in their health and in their biology. And we have the data to suggest that people who do this for seven days, their body looks like genetically and biologically, they're in a different life. Yeah. <laughs> their body is no longer responding in the same way and they're no longer victims to their environment because they can self-regulate. There tends to be a greater resistance yeah. Uh, to anything in their environment, even on a microscopic level. If you enjoyed that clip from my podcast, here's another powerful clip that is really going to help you with your health and happiness. I'm on a mission to get every human being to add one thing to their morning routine. This takes five days to work before you have an enormous breakthrough in how you see and relate to yourself.